Welcome back to What Are Noobs with General Disturbance. This is an M12. It's the Tier 7 American SPG and it's located on the east spawn Your of Airfield and is under the command of Time Bender Bender. Out. And battle has started. Uh, Fender Bender's got a mark of excellence on his barrel, so he's uh, pretty good. And he's taking it off to the south side of the map. Now, they actually built a hundred of these M12s during the war, 60 in 1942 and a third of 40 in 1943. Only 74 of them saw action in Europe. They were designed for the European theatre and it's based on a French 155mm gun. And they had several types, the M1917, the M1917A1 and the M1918. Now that depended on which gun was available at the time when they were building them. They built them on an M3 chassis as you can see there. And they also used what they called an M30, to, which was a, a version of the vehicle without the gun. And that carried around the ammunition because they could only carry 10 projectiles and propellant cartridges on any one M12. And the M30 had to carry around 40 rounds of 155mm ammunition and the crew. And he tried to get that round there on that T25TP, but he pulled back just in time for the shell to go over the, the well, alongside him and hit the water behind him. Now, they usually use this for indirect fire, but uh, a few M12s were used for direct fire on the enemy. And when they did that, they called them the door knockers because they were used to knock down gun emplacements and bunkers. Okay, we fired around at the Type 64. Get a nice 182 hit point splash. Oh my gum, we're five tanks down already, and the battle's only been going two minutes. Oh, and the Type 64 has been wiped out. We've gained two tanks back. But, oh, horrendous start. 5-0 down after a very short period of time. Oh, we fired that round in. And he got a direct hit because the shell disappeared. That 25 TP took the full force. And you can see he's been stunned. In fact, actually, he's just been hit again. And virtually completely wiped out by that last shot. And Fender Bender's moving because the enemy seems to be making ground on this side of the map. Okay, he's picked another position so he can fire at the enemy. Uh, but he's behind cover, but unfortunately the, the mountain's too close to him, or the rock's too close to him, he's got a red line showing he can't fire close, but he has to fire further back. Okay, he's decided to go up on top of the hill, I think. From here he won't get any obstructions, and that means he'll be able to shoot at enemies that are close to him, as well as further away. And as he gets further up the hill, he'll be able to hit that T25 TP. Now he's got a green line, and now he can shoot at the enemy. He's lining up a shot, he's going for the SU-100, I think. Fires a round in. Gets a 65 hit point splash on the SU-100. And he's pulling back down just so he can't be seen. I think he's going to pop up every time he needs to shoot and then pop back down for cover. And in fact, he's got a whole bunch of targets he can hit there. The SU-100's been killed. Going for the Panzer 3-4. Dialing in. Lining the shot up, fires a round in, and gets a splash hit for 210 on the Panzer 3-4. But he's having to relocate again. Now they've come from 5-0 down, or 0-5 down I should say. Now it's, the score's 9-11, so there are only two tanks down now. And he's moving north to try and get away from the tanks on the south side, but unfortunately there's a pair of tanks coming towards him. One of them's an E25, the other's a 45 TP, and he's lining a shot up on the E25. It's difficult. Uh, T25's going up the post. Oh, look at that! Good shot! 271 hit points on the E25. He's given that Hellcat a chance now. If he turns around in time to see the E25, and I think he realises the E25's there now, and he's pulling back down the hill. E25's now on top of that mound. Oh, the Hellcat goes down. So it's now 11 to 12. The e 25 is going to come around that corner any second now. And he fires around in and gets the splash kill. 52 hit points. Takes out the E25. That was the biggest threat. There's still a 45 TP around there. That's a Polish heavy tank. 
I've got a T67 coming up on the cap area. There's only two left on his team. The SU-85 and Fender Bender in his M12. So he's joining the SU-85 in a defensive position so he can shoot at the enemy without getting fired on. The SU-85 will do the spotting. He'll do the shooting. And the 45 TP is close and he's been spotted. And the 45 TP is shooting at him. He was hugging the rock there trying to turn around without being killed. And he's also trying to seek cover because he doesn't want the enemy RT to shoot at him. The one. Oh my god, he shotgunned him! He got a hill. It was well, it wasn't overhead aimed, but not really a technical shotgun. But he killed that 45 TP with a very near miss. Um, a splash kill, 45, um, 79 hit points. Sorry, not 45. And he's now moving towards the enemy cap. But there's still a T67 out there. He's reloaded. He's got 23.37 seconds on the reload. But the SU-85 is moving ahead of him. He's got 100% health. He needs to find that T67 and then shoot him as soon as he's been spotted. He's hugging the rock at the moment to avoid the T67 finding him. And the T67 is the other side of the rock. Oh my god, so this T67 is really close. He's less than 100 meters away. He's really close. There he is. And he's, the T67 is going after the SU-85. SU he's lining up a shot now to try and get the T67. He doesn't need to worry. The SU-85's killed him. But Fender Bender was seen and the SU-85's just been hit by the enemy RT, which is a GW Panther, which is also Tier 7 SVG. Hopefully the SU-85 will get moving quickly because that GW is bound to fire on the same position again in the hope of catching the tank while he's uh, repairing. And they're both going to take uh, the route through the middle towards the uh, enemy RT. Now I suspect that the GW will probably be in the northwest corner of the map. That's where some RT tend to go most often. If they both go together, then if one of them gets killed, the other one can do something about it. It also means they'll have two shots at the enemy when they finally locate him. Now, there's only one M12 left in the world, and it's currently located at the... Uh, United States Army Ordnance Museum in Aberdeen, Maryland. Uh, but, uh, oh, no, sorry, it's not. It's actually in Fort Sill. <laughs> Fort Sill over Oklahoma. And it's the last one you can see because all the others have gone. Um, so if you do go to the home of US Army Artillery, because that Fort Sill is where they chain the artillerymen, uh, you can actually see all the US Army um, artillery pieces that they've got left. And he's waiting just outside the cap area. The moment the SU-85 gets close, I think he'll nip into the cap. The GW Panther will be so occupied with trying to aim towards the cap area, he'll forget that the SU-85's there or may not even see him. He is capping. Okay, so the GW Panther is going to be preoccupied with aiming in this direction. So the SU-85 needs to find him. We're going to take aim in that area, put the, the buildings in the way. And that's good because it means that any shell from the GW Panther is going to hit the buildings before it can hit uh, Bender Bender. There's the GW! Oh my god, he's close! Find him up and... Whoa! Well, we shotgunned him, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to kill him. So he's going to try and drive past him force the GW to turn to face him and he's reloading and we're going to turn because he's got hung up on the rock we're going to reload first we've got him we rammed him in the side oh god this is funny this is so so funny the SU-85 will be driving over we've reloaded we can go for a shotgun kill this is a comedy moment here we go ah yes 71 hit points kills the GW Panther and wins the game he must have been in the south he must have been in the southwest corner. Oh, God, that was so funny. 
<laughs> and here's the end of battle results. It's the second class tanker for Fender Bender in the M12. What an ending that was, that battle. <laughs> he also picked up a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 13. He didn't get any epic medals, but it was worth watching that replay for the last few seconds of the game. Um, and a win eight for that battle of 2,706. What a funny end. I've had similar battles myself where you've killed the last enemy with a, a single shotgun like that. But, you know, not getting a full kill on the last shot and having to then try and reload and stop the enemy from shooting you in the meanwhile. <laughs> he handled that very, very well. So well done, Fender Bender. Um, let's have a look at team score, see how well he did. Well, he didn't get the highest amount of damage on his team. That went to the SU-85 that he was teamed up with. He managed to pick up the high caliber and 2,037 hit points of damage. When it came to uh, Fender Bender, he managed 1,519. And the enemy SU-100 managed 1,560. When it came to kills, it was the SU-85 again. He managed to get four kills. Fender Bender managed to get three. So did the M18 Hellcat. And uh, then the 25 TP with two. And the virtual the highest score on the enemy team was two kills and a number of them managed to get that uh, when it came to base xp again it's the su85 who came out on top 945 xp um, he was tier six in a tier uh, seven game so obviously he benefited from hitting higher tier opponents every time he did and then came fender bender with 863 base xp and then the 25 tp was 693 the highest on the enemy team there e25 the one that fender bender took out with a splash kill 427 base xp so let's have a look at the detail report. Well, he only fired 10 rounds during that battle, but he got three direct hits, no penetrations, six splash, damage of 1,519 hit points, of which 757 were up more than 300 meters. Obviously, the GW Panther was very close when he killed him. Um, too close for comfort, really. He spotted one enemy vehicle, that was the GW Panther. He damaged seven of the enemy, killed three of them, and he did stun assistance damage of 671 hit points off six stuns. He also managed to get 18 capture points in the cap by uh, uh, waiting for that uh, GW Panther to turn up. He earned, on a standard account, 21,979 credits. And after repair and ammunition resupply, he still took away 10,605 credits. He also picked up 863 base XP, times two for the first victory. So he took away 1,726 experience points. But yes, what a comeback. Nought to five. It was, they were five tanks down during that battle, right at the start of the battle. And they came back to win the game by giving the last enemy the coup de grace in the enemy cap area or near the enemy cap area. And that was an amazing battle and so funny, so worth it just for those last 10 seconds of the game or last half, uh, half a minute of the game. Uh, so thank you for sending in this replay, Fender Bender. If you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.